thanks, thanks, very sweet. No, very, very kind of her, but we, we may find ourselves at the residence inn for a, a bit. <laughs> right, you're, you'll see how long those, those two weeks become and then. <laughs> Um, all right, why don't we, why don't we get started? Uh, I assume David will join us, but he, there could have been some confusion about uh, um, the time. Uh, maybe he'll join us not until seven, but uh, um, why don't we in the meantime call it uh, everything to order. So uh, 607, I would like to call the Finance and Advisory Committee to order. We'll take a roll call attendance, starting with uh, you, Valerie. Valerie McCormick here. Nick Tenson here. Tina Shang Hargrove here. John Village here. We're currently missing David Wanger, but we uh, hope he will be joining at some point um, during the meeting. Um, so really most of the agenda revolves around sort of going through um, ATM script uh, to the extent we wanna sort of walk through that. Sure, we've got coverage. Most of our work has been done with the, uh, with the commentary. But I thought we might just walk through that to uh, um, make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, does everybody have that script that uh, with Joe sent around a couple of days ago? The last one was April twenty sixth, right? That's the most updated version. Yeah, I've, I exactly. I haven't seen another um, version of that. Pull this up on my screen. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do. Um, let me see if I can actually share that on my screen. Can everybody see that? Um, so just the stuff at the beginning is straightforward. Um, the latest that I, what I, what I heard, um, and I can't remember, um, if this was a meeting or, or just meetings that Christine and I might have attended, but, uh, um, we are doing reports. Um, so we didn't do that at the last ATM, but we are going to go back and, and do um, reports from uh, um, usually it's BOS, um, chair of the BOS, chair of FinCom, and, um, and then Joe. Um, uh, we're going to try to limit them. Um, the latest I heard was 15 minutes for sort of all of them, um, which is a lot shorter than we normally do. Um, but at any rate, I'm sort of drafting my comments now, but it's it's largely going to be a um, condensed version of what we had in sort of the um, annual report, sort of prologue to our commentary and other bits and pieces in our in our commentary. Um, but I'm I'm certainly happy to dive into you know what I'm planning on saying. I'm not going to have a lot of time, so it's more about hitting the the high points about uh, you know. Prop two and a half, as, as well as some things that we may talk later with with Capcom about this. Um, um, you know, fu future needs for the uh, um, the uh, for the town, um, both from a you know, spending perspective and the need to control our our annual operating costs. Um, but uh, happy to you know, if there are any other specific things we we want to mention that aren't otherwise in in our sort of hit list of of things we've been talking about in our commentary and our, in our uh, annual report. Um, but it's gonna usually generally follow along those lines. Um, in terms of uh, the next article, so really uh, one of the things I wanna do just to make sure everyone's on the same page is we've got a bunch of things in consent, um, motion, in fact, more articles than we normally have. But um, as far as then, um, it's not only who's making the motion, but it's also usually in many cases, FinCom is, is going to provide its recommendation in discussion form after the motion is made. 
Um, we sort of, because we don't know what's going to be, make it through the consent motion, we sort of have to have backup plans for everything. We, we've generally taken the approach, if you're responsible for the commentary, then you're responsible for the discussion on that, uh, on that article. Um, so we probably should just walk through this and make sure we're all on the same page as to who, who has sort of back or primary responsibility for articles. Um, let's see, uh, two dash one. Um, all right, Bill is gonna actually, he's going to move it. Um, if there isn't, I guess, is this one? Yeah, two dash one is part of the consent motion. Um, but the backup, I can't remember who, Christina, do you remember who had responsibility for this one? It might've been me. I, I think I, uh, but I can't remember who originally drafted it, but I think I, think I might've done commentary um, if I remember correctly. I'm just trying to look at my notes and see if I, um, wrote it down. Um, oh, I know it's a little slip of paper. Hang on. <laughs> I don't have two dash one. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was the one we did. I did it the last minute. We, we talked about it at the last meeting and then because we needed the detail um, um, and we got the information from Diane on what the, the sort of line items are. Why don't I take that one? Because I'm, I'm virtually certain I ended up writing. It's going to be a really short discussion anyway. This is only yeah. one calls hold on it. I have from the notes from the Board of Selectmen meeting 1-3 consent, Rosie, and then Bill if held, actually. So I think Bill was, Rosie was gonna move the consent motion and then Bill would take any of those that if they were held. Yeah, so Bill, so Bill's making the motion. Oh. And so say it, it gets held from the consent motion, Bill would make the motion, but then usually on these, especially financial articles, if and we should, you know, probably coordinate with Bill on this. Some discussion. Okay. Taking the motion, but usually there's discussion after the motion. Okay. And usually for a financial one, it would come from us. Um, but uh, certainly if you want, if you wanted to discuss this one, you could certainly take it. I think it's relatively remote that it actually doesn't uh, stay in the consent motion. Uh, two dash two. So that would be, that's actually a motion. It's not consent motion. That's gonna be made by Nick. Um, so, so Nick, that one will, will be, you'll make the motion. You'll also do the discussion, which will probably be all of a sentence or two. <laughs> if it's even necessary, since the motion <laughs> itself is almost <laughs> um, uh, self-explanatory. So John, uh, sorry, going back to 2-1, I just went back and that was one that I did. So I can take that. I can be back up on 2-1. Um, okay, yeah, as long as, if you're okay doing that, it was as long as you've got the details. I just, I don't wanna, I don't yeah. want to put anybody on the spot that didn't sort of have the details from the commentary. Yeah. Um, uh, 2-3. Um, all right, so that will be, that will be me. Um, and this will probably have a pretty lengthy discussion too. At the same time, I, I um, because I'll do the report and our commentary, if I remember, was like pages upon pages on this one. So it's going to be a really high level summary. Um, and there could be, um, additional, uh, as we'll talk about later in the agenda. Um, uh, there's the potential that this one actually gets split, or at least that there is um, going to be a lot of discussion on the on the school side of it. Um, but I will certainly give our, um, our point on the uh, 
viewpoint on the uh, the combined budget. Um, Two dash four. Uh, I think this was you, Christina. Although let's also maybe table discussion of this until um, uh, we have the uh, Capcom members. Yep. Two dash five. Uh, once again, this is a this is a consent motion one, so it's Bill, and then um, who did the commentary for this one? Water, David, I think. I think that was me. 2-6. Yep. All right. All right, 2-5 back up as well. <clears throat> Is that the pool revolving fund? This is, yeah. Two dash seven. I think I did that one. That rings a bell. Yeah. <laughs> it was so long ago. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yes, that was me. Uh, HDC, I'm pretty sure that was David. Yep. Um, is that a consent motion one? Scroll back up. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, two, eight, yeah. Six, yeah, five through 10 are all consent motions, okay. Um, OPEB, I think, is also David, if I'm correct? Yep. Yes. Patton. Valerie. It's also consent. Stabilization. Looks like it's David. Sorry, good evening. Oh, hey, David. Um, so we're, David, we're just to uh, catch you up. We're walking through the, uh, the script, um, mainly from the point of view of making sure we're all on the same page, who has um, discussion portions, yeah. articles. We've, since we've, all, we've talked about with and coordinated with the BOS on, on who's making the motions. Um, uh, but I think for a lot of these, a lot of these, they're going to be consent motions. Um, but if they somehow get pulled from the consent motion, and Bill Olson will then be doing the, the the moving of the article. But because of the financial articles, we may want to provide some discussion, or at least be be the backstop for the discussion. Um, so we're effectively assigning roles uh, based on uh, who did the commentary for those articles. So have I, prior to, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll prior, to through. prior to stabilization, was, do I have any? You had. Two five is the first one. Uh, yeah, we. I think you had water. Yeah. That's, that rings a bell for you. Right. And that one's, that one's just a, a backup if it gets pulled from consent. Um, Eight and the nine. next one is uh, HTC, also backup um, uh, if it gets pulled from consent. Yeah. And um, oh, oh, OPEB as well. You're busy. <laughs> Although also backup. And then the first one you definitely have uh, because it's not consent motion is uh, 
the stabilization fund, 2-11. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right, 2-12. Um, as far as the CPC ones, I don't know if we... I, I can't see it, what is it? Oh, I'm sorry. This is uh, this is the first CPC one, so the ones that are going to cover most of the administration debt service, um, uh, the, the the all the things that are not the, the the tennis courts or the town hall. Um, and I can't I can't remember if in years past we've even done a discussion on this one. Um, My notes are that Jay Butler or Sean are is going to do. That's that's what I feel like. I, I I feel like it's there's not too much to add here. Um, and you know we can, Christina, we can confirm tomorrow that we won't be doing discussion on this one. Um, similar to, I mean, I, I would say the same thing for two dash thirteen. Um, I mean, as, as far as the tennis courts go, it's. Uh, I just don't think there's going to be much to add. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, 2-14 town hall obviously is going to be um, trying to remember what order we went in uh, at, at STM. But I would assume we want to sort of do a similar, and I don't know, Nick, has there been any discussion about um, what's going to be presented, how it's going to be presented at, uh, at ATM. No, they, I, they didn't meet today. They're meeting tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so I'll have more detail at that time. Um, okay. my assumption is that I'll be, uh, it, I will be presenting the motion, right? I think that was what yes. it is. Or, um, or I, I think it's actually Jay Butler, just as CPC is presenting is making. Oh, that's true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if there's an, a need for a backup or an, any kind of discussion, I'll, that's where I'm supposed to come in. Yeah, exactly. And, and I assume it'll probably be, once again, multiple people doing discussion. And you'll have someone from the town hall building committee talking about the project and changes in the project. And then I think similar to the last time where you can add in is um, you know, specific thoughts not to be uh, repetitive of what they're saying, but things that are more focused on the financing of it. And yeah, the primary, I, I don't know that I'll be able to say anything new what they, what, from what they say, but primarily what we're concerned about is the fact that is at a point now where it's being funded by uh, something so it doesn't impact the tax rate. That's a big deal. That's right. That's it. That's exactly right. Now, just um, just remember that. Oh, and you know what? I I, I think I know where you're going with this. I think I jumped. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was the CPC one. So, once again, really, I was I think talking about two dash fifteen. Um, that's I think that's where we're going to have all the discussion. Because is that what we did last STM? Yes. Yeah. So that's really where the the discussion is. Oops. That's where I think there's going to be one presentation and then two points. Right. So we're going to talk about them together, and then right whether it's either before two fourteen or it's um, and maybe it will be maybe it'll be one presentation at two fourteen after that motion is made, and then uh, and then two separate votes. Um, Okay, 
three dash one. Um, Valerie wrote this one. I think so. Is this one you, Valerie? Can you scroll up just a little bit? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the Chebacca Road easement. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can do that. We can, we can see tomorrow this, so this will not be consent motion because it's two thirds vote. Um, there may be someone from the BOS that actually wants to speak to it too, um, since it's a non-financial article. Um, so we can, any, anyway, we'll figure out what coordinate whether anything needs to be said, but it's straightforward since it's really just accepting an easement as opposed to granting one. Um, yeah, maybe we won't have to say anything. Yeah. But uh, if we if we do, then um, then we've got Valerie for that. Three dash two is that's you, Valerie. And then three dash three is That's the pilot part of it. That's also, that's part of the consent motion. Um, but I think you've got that one too, Valerie, just as backup. Is it part of the consent motion? Because- um... Well, Bill's doing it. I, I didn't know if that was, maybe it's not. We have any three articles that are in there. Maybe we, maybe we can't do it as part of the consent. I'm happy to do it. I don't think I wrote the um, thing on it, but, uh, but I can do that. Actually, let, me, let me scroll back and see what was in the consent motion. Okay, yeah, so it's none of the three articles, and I guess the problem. So these will actually have to be moved. Um, so well, it's similar to Three dash one. We can. We'll. We'll see if we need to say anything. If anyone's going to say anything, um, but it's pretty. Uh, hopefully, it's pretty straightforward. Bill Olson may want to talk about it, and if he does, then he can certainly put that up. Two people discussing. So, just looking back, I realize that I am moving two dash four capital expenditures, and I also volunteer just now to do the discussion on it. Does that matter? If I'm... Oh, um, no, I mean, no, it's actually, in fact, usually it's the person that moves it does the discussion. Like it's usually you move it then the moderator for a second. Okay. He goes back and recognizes you. Um, but we, one that we should talk about, uh, from once Capcom joins, they, they may want to, um, uh, they, they may want to say something too. Maybe it's, we only need one person discussing it or we can both speak to it. Um, uh, that uh, we'll hear what they, uh, what tack they want to take um, on that one. Okay. All right, so I think, okay, that's, that is it. Um, any other thoughts, comments on the, uh, uh, the script? Um, we've got sort of a, a walkthrough meeting that Christina and I uh, have tomorrow. Um, so we'll coordinate, you know, our, what we're talking about here with everyone else. Um, but uh, um, I think we've got a, uh, a good plan in place. <laughs> probably a better plan than we've had in, in, in uh, meetings past, uh, <laughs> which sometimes seem to come together the Friday before. Okay. Um, 
So why don't we move to the the, the next item, which um, I had uh, David had brought up um, uh, before uh, uh, our meeting. So we 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 put an agenda item, and then I think everyone saw the email that I had forwarded um, uh, from from Bill Bowler um, from a uh, from a, a citizen. Mm -hmm. uh, you may have additional information as well, David, because I think you've gotten it from someone else. But uh, the long and short of it is there there certainly seems to be an indication that um, a motion is going to be made to um, separate out the school portion of the, um, the budget from Article 2-3. Um, although it seems more likely that um, it's more to provide additional focus and or commentary um, from certain members of the public than necessarily a specific motion to fund it at a certain level or at a reduced level. Um, at least that's what I can uh, that's what I can gather. I don't know if David, you had heard anything else or have anything else uh, um, to. Uh, 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 nothing of uh, great substance. I understand that it, uh, this particular issue may involve some criticism of the budget of the superintendent and uh, the emphasis on administrative expenditures to the exclusion of uh, academic expenditures. But, but it's something that we were not party to. I think uh, some, some of us, one, one of us should be prepared if necessary to speak uh, within that context. But I, I don't know any, anything more than uh, you have related. Why would we be involved in the discussing the details of the, the uh, school budget? Because that's really what it is. It's, it's really the, it's getting into the weeds. And I don't know that we're, we're equipped to say, yeah, money should be here and not there. Well, well that may be the appropriate comment, Nick. Uh, I'm not suggesting that uh, we are obliged to talk to the merits of whatever the motion may be, but someone may say, what is the FinCom's uh, approach or understanding here. And uh, we ought to be prepared, I think, to say, as we had in the past been an advocate of the split uh, budget discussion, this year, based upon discussions that have taken place prior to ATM, I don't think we uh, can be viewed as an advocate supportive of the motion. Is that Accurate, John. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. Yes, because Dave, Nick David was really talking more about the motion, the splitting of it per se, versus what's actually in the budget and whether it should have been spent. We're just we're we're, we're guessing as to what the commentary is going to be. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I I think you you um, um, certainly anyone jump in if they they disagree. But um, where we we we've been. Um, uh, advocates for in the past for you know specific reason um, we aren't this year. That that being said, and and you know one thing to um, I don't know if it's appropriate to comment on it at this ATM, but maybe it is. You know, in general, you know, part of me thinks like you know should the school budget, given the size of it and given you know its importance, and oftentimes it's either you know. Um, uh, something that significant debate has had. Should it be a, you know, should we design our warrant so that it's a separate article just as a matter of course, N as opposed to a, um, a mechanism that we've used in the past to offer, you know, essentially, you know, two different uh, funding options. Yeah, that, that, yeah, I see it as two different things. Right. What you just said in the latter is that we, we've separated the budget to emphasize not where it should go, but that the dollar amount should not exceed a certain amount. 
that's not what this is all about. This is really a, um, a commentary on where the, how the funds are being used. Right. I don't, I don't know how we, how we, David, I, maybe you're, I know you're, you're uh, right that there'll be someone who might say, Hey, FinCom, what do you think of this? And I, I think we really should be deflecting this one and saying, this is not a, the detail of the budget is not an issue for us where we, where we position it is what the total budget is. And that is the, limiting the total budget. I, um, I, I agree with that. Uh, uh, I'm just making the point that uh, it is a budgetary related uh, exercise. Yeah. And, and uh, somebody may say, what does FinCom think about this? And we ought to just be prepared. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm no, and, and David, I, I'll handle that because I've got, uh, um, I'm doing the, the commentary for 2-3. So since this is, this is part of that, um, you know, certainly it'll, it'll be mentioned in my discussion. Um, I, I haven't totally wrapped my head around how it's actually going to play out because I think the way it's happening, this is part of the, the email that Bill had, Bowler had sent to, uh, um, uh, and I'm, I'm blanking on her name that uh, had inquired about this is that, um, you know, normally we, what it is is that they you read off each of the, as part of my motion, you read off each of the, the sort of line items, one of which is the school, and that any of those can then be held for further discussion. Um, so that's probably what's going to happen because it sounded like from, and who knows, I mean, anything could potentially happen, is that this motion to split out the school budget was more so that it, could just be basically discussed in an open forum, as opposed to an amendment to actually change the school budget to a certain amount. Um, because, you know, as, as, as we know, although it's, I'm sure it's probably um, lost on uh, many citizens for good reason, it's just the, the, the vagaries of, of the way town meetings and municipal finance works, but they, you can't, I don't think there's anything that can be done actually at ATM to determine how that school money is spent. You are just basically saying yes or no to an actual assessment. Right. And I think the sentiment is the level of spending is okay. We would just rather it be spent on um, educators rather than administrators. Um, so, you know, I think most of the discussion will revolve around that. Those kinds of questions, clearly the school should be responding to those. Um, but if it turns out, you know, that is not the case and it's for the decreased level of spend, we can certainly get, I can certainly give our reasoning and commentary on, on why we were recommending the level of spend. Right, I, th I think you made some comment in the commentary about smaller heads. Right. <laughs> That's right, David. <laughs> I'll have to get my yeah, my one-liners ready for Saturday. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I'm I'm guessing it, it may be that if, if the sentiment really isn't to change the spend, it's really just to discuss the, the components of it, um, even knowing probably nothing is going to happen. It may be, and it looked like Bill was, uh, Bill Bowler was potentially, the moderator was potentially, um, I think, subtly making the point that you may not even want to have a motion to amend because it's not clearly, like, you'd have to actually have something to amend. It may just be you hold an item and then, you know, can ask questions and discuss that specific line item. So maybe it goes actually in that direction. Because um, I've been privy to the everything at the school committee level, but I'm assuming some of the same people that probably are against the, the manner in which the, the school budget is going to be spent made some of these same comments at school committee meetings before the actual budget was, was approved. Um, and it's certainly their right to, to you know, make them at ATM as well. Um, uh, and, you know, certainly, certainly proper, but, uh, um, in, just in terms of how it actually uh, procedurally, the the you know how it how it worked out, it may not have 
Um, it may just be more, you know, comments and discussion than it is um, anything actually procedural. But uh, we shall see. I mean, I'm a little concerned because I think the people who want to try to bring this motion are going to be disappointed by what happens because they want to talk about the details of the budget. Um, and uh, I don't think the town moderating is going to let them talk about it very much um, because that's not really the topic. You know, that's not what's being voted on, like you said. Um, they think they're going to separate it out, which I think means they think that they're going to be able to vote on it separately. Um, but yeah, and I, and I don't know if, and I don't know, and once again, I'm just speculating. Um, but it sounded like from the, the email I saw today, it might be that they, um, they, they wanted to separate it out to, so that they could discuss it as opposed to really uh, change anything. Um, um, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, it could be completely proper just to, you know, make a motion to vote on this as a separate article, um, even if it's for the exact same amount. Um, I so guess. I guess they would only want to do that if they're going to encourage people to vote against it, um, which they probably aren't going to do because they don't want the school to not have any money. Um, so we're going to end up voting. You have to vote for the whole town budget or, or not. Yeah. Um, Perhaps we might make the point that uh, had this been brought to FinCom attention in the normal procedural course leading up to ATM, uh, we would have had an opportunity to uh, vet it and speak more substantively about it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that, you know, I mean, the bottom line though is, is if, you know, and I'm now looking to the future, but um, if it, if they were successful in separating this out as a separate motion, um, it's potentially a good thing, especially if, if there's a potential that the school budget fails, but that there's no issue with the town budget. Um, and if that's the case, I mean, in, in, in some sense, it's, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, that, that, it sort of begs the question, should you have them as separate articles? Um, I mean, it's like the fact that we... I know it's it's nice and clean to have the, the the entire sort of operating budget as one article, but you know we're, we're separating the CPC into three different articles so that we can isolate specific issues for discussion. Yeah. Um, yet for the school, which is oftentimes one of the biggest discussion, we're basically putting it all together where it's an all or none. You you know you're voting down the and and, and maybe I could have this wrong. Maybe holding it from the budget means you actually. Uh, can vote on it separately. I don't. I don't. I don't. That, that I'm not 100 clear on. I don't know if anyone else is. But in the past, we have been uh, advocates for separate consideration. Yeah. Uh, right. And, oh. and, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, in that case, weren't we just bifurcating the uh, budget and right. voting on two different parts? Yes. Is that what this is happening here? I, I thought that's what the goal was, but maybe I didn't see today's email, so I'm not I'm not up to date. Oh, yeah. That. And it's. Uh, um, and, you know, I, I think it's in, in once you see it after the meeting, uh, it should know your your opinion, but it's not. Uh, um, It's it's really the um, and Jennifer Bevelock was her her name at least or at least the person that was um, uh, inquiring uh, of the moderator how to make the motion, which says that the intent is is not to ask for more money but rather to demand that the superintendent listen to the you know the school community in terms that have in, in the concerns that have been raised about where the money's being allocated, um, and. 
you know, she says in her, you know, this motion is our last opportunity to be heard as unconventional as it may be. Um, anyway, I don't completely quote from it because it's not really a, um, I'm not sure she sent it for, for wide dis distribution, but it sounds, sounds as if it's, it's more, um, it's an opportunity to be heard. And, you know, in, in some sense, they may not, the ultimate goal might not be to actually pass a motion to separate it out with practical effect. It might just be to, you know, continue discussion, um, which they can probably do anyway. So, so maybe uh, FinCom's approach should be the, uh, the concept is certainly worthy of discussion for future uh, use, but we have not had an opportunity to vet this for this ATM and therefore we don't support it if we're asked. The, the, the splitting, right, yeah. Um, Besides the, the big difference between what we did was we had a budget that included a certain amount for the schools and then a separate article for what the school asked for that was above what we thought was would might be a reasonable choice for people to vote for. Here they just want to separate it out. So it would be town is the first one, you know, town and everything else is the first one, and school is the second one. So if the school, if the vote is no on the school budget, there's not nothing for the for the school and the uh, or it's it's yes. It's either no or yes. You either get you either get the money that they want or they they don't get anything, you have to go back to the drawing board. Um, so yeah, that's a big difference between what we had done in the past. Yeah, and ex exactly, which was, which was a true bifurcation of the budget. Here it's not, it's more just a separation of the budget, but I, I don't know, I, I, um, I think it's something to think about certainly in future years is, is yeah. does it make sense to actually just have the school budget as a separate article? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's good for the town side because it makes clear to people how much, um, exactly how much is going to the town and how much is going to the schools in the in the budget, what they're what they're voting on. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, I feel like we do it with everything else in terms of separating out separate articles that actually have potentially impact what the bottom line projected tax rate is. Um, so why for something that's 60 plus percent of your budget, you, would, you, would, you wouldn't do that. Um, I, I think in some sense might just be confusing to people. And then having these things, and you know, if that was the case, you know, say we weren't recommending you know, the full school budget. I, I also don't think you should then have a bifurcated school budget. It should just basically be like, if it comes in at this level and we think it should be funded at a lower level, that's what our recommendation should be which is no and potentially amend, you know, on the floor, but keep it all within one sort of school article um, and have the de debate there. Um, I, just, I just feel like the more you have this attenuated, um, you know, procedural kind of thing with, with these motions to split things out in separate articles, it just, it, it, it sort of gets confusing for people. Um, I mean, it gets it's confusing for me. <laughs> Um, all right. At any rate, I think we uh, we'll see as it develops. But I think we're we're prepared under uh, whatever circumstances, um, and we'll uh, we'll see how it uh, how it plays out. Um, but uh, but thank you, David, for bringing this to our attention so that we could actually put it on our agenda. Yeah. Um, let's see. We've got about. 10 minutes until Capcom's going to join us. Um, <coughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> so the only two things I really had uh, remained uh, were um, uh, talking about the composition of FinCom sort of going forward, um, as well as then Valerie had circulated um, a series of minutes to. Uh, um, to approve. Um, had, I mean, maybe let's deal with the, the minutes first just because uh, um, potentially we can get as far as we get. Had everyone had a chance to review those? So we had left off the February 9th 
minutes last time we went over minutes because I had some I don't know provisions suggestions we uh, we approved three set uh, four sets on February 9th right on February 9th mm-hmm um, Those were, yeah, like January meet, meetings. We did not do yeah. the February 9th minutes. That's where, um, that's where we left off. Yeah, so I, let me see. This is on the next to last paragraph of under number three. Are we looking at the February 9th minutes? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, is that, yeah, I'm just is that the first one we should look at? Do you want me to yeah, perfect. To share this or do you, is it, would that be easier? Yes, that'd be a good idea. Can I do that? Actually, do you want me to share it? Because I have red lined. Perfect. Things. Uh, but you have to, John, you have to stop. Oh, sharing. I've got to stop share. Yeah. There we go. Oh, why does it do that? Okay. Um, Sorry, so can you see it now here? The yes. yes. Yeah. So the next to the last paragraph in section three discussion on the budget. And so the redlining is what I suggested. The board discussed whether CPC funds would be used to resurf the tennis courts, which would cost $40,000. The tennis courts are jointly used with Wenham. Oh yeah, see, there had been a suggestion that the tennis courts are jointly used with Wenham. So there was a question as to whether Wenham would be assessed for part of the work done. Um, And then I added after discussion was determined that FinCom had no issue with the use of CPC funds for resurfacing. So I think uh, these are the patent tennis courts, so they're not actually jointly used. Did you say they're not jointly used? Okay. Correct, yeah. So that needed to be corrected. So that was my suggestion. I think that was the only thing on here. Oh. Um. The uh, on five, actually, if you go back up, uh, um, uh, the select person from Wenham is uh, Gary uh, Cheeseman. If I'm pronouncing that correctly. Gary. Yeah, I think I, I think I blanked on his name while I, um, I was given the update. It? I think that was it, unless anybody else. All right. Accept all changes. Tracking and we'll save. Um, so does, does anyone, anyone have any uh, uh, on to uh, February 10th? Uh, oh, wait a second. So on March 24th, I wrote, re we approved all but the two dash, the February 9th minutes. So I think on March 24th, we already approved the. I don't have anything. I don't have any record of. Uh, um, so on the 24th, we, okay, wait. Was I there? I, Cause I, I have the last ones we approved uh, March 10th, maybe? Uh, 
Yeah, so February 9th, we, we approved the January minutes. Um, the 24th, we approved um, I don't think we really actually did do anything on the 24th. So I, I, have, no, I have an e email to Valerie saying we've approved all but the 2-9 minutes attached are my suggested revisions. Um, and what, uh, what date was that? On March 24th. Oh, March 24th. I'm sorry, I was looking. Uh, okay, because we, we had reviewed and approved everything before the two nines. Yes, that's definitely true. Do we have the March 24th minutes? <laughs> Let me see. Naming's all different, here we go. Review and approval of available minutes. Um, yes, we made a motion to approve the minutes for February 10th and 20, 24th and March 3rd. I need, just didn't record them, I guess. I wonder if you had to leave early. Oh, it's March 10th. Oh, that, I think I that totally, yeah, I bet okay. that completely happened. Yeah. So right. it's, we did February 10th, February 24th, and March 10th minutes. Hey, Bob. Hey, how are you, Nick? Am I too early? No, no we're just we're just doing some uh, minute stuff. <laughs> Administrative things. Um, so we'll uh, we'll start. Bill's Bill's already joined us. I see Dave's on as well. I can uh, I can go away and come back and find. No, no. My <laughs> wife usually sends me away for longer periods than that. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, we can just be seen, not heard. I'll mute myself <laughs> and uh, get out of your way. I think it should be 310, Valerie. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't have a meeting down for 33. No, okay. it's 310. And now we just, oh, now we can approve the 29 minutes. All right. And you sent me the changes. So I will go back and find those and then accept them. And, um, um, Uh, no, so I think the three, the February 10th, February 24th, and March 10th were all approved the way they were. Okay. And then I tried to send you my suggestions for February 9th, but we just went over that. So that's all, all right. set. Okay. Also, as long as we vote on it, I think we didn't actually vote on it. Uh, we did. <laughs> yeah, so why don't we, I, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes of February 9th as uh, just amended. So moved. So moved. Second. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor? You, Valerie? Valerie McCormick, aye. Nick Tenson, aye. Dave Wanger, aye. Christina Shankar Grove, aye. And John Prulich, aye. All right. So we, so now I think we're now caught up on minutes and um, uh, until we get the, uh, the next, uh, the next set starting on the 24th, I believe. That should be right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. So we've got Jack. We just need, um, we're just waiting on, I think we're just waiting on Heather, right? Dave Thompson. Yep. Just Heather's. Bob. Hmm. Logging in now. Heather, how are you? I'm good. Sorry, I'm late. No, perfect timing. We we literally like just finished our minute approval like 30 seconds ago. So uh, perfect. That's that's my skill. I come in right at the right at the last minute here. So I think you've got, uh, I think you've got your full Capcom continued if you want to go ahead and uh, call your meeting to order. 
We do. I can't even tell that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess we do. Sorry, I just I didn't even stop to look. Um, all right, I call the Capitol Committee order at uh, 7.03 p.m. Second. 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 Okay, all in favor? Who's here? We have Heather Ford. Dave Thompson. Jack Wilson. And Bill Wilson. Okay, we're all here then. All Thanks right, for, welcome. Thank you for letting us uh, you know, glom onto your meeting. We totally appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, where, let us know where you sort of want to want to begin or what want us to focus on, Heather, in terms of um, we had sort of gone over the the, the script earlier from um, you know the general point of view, and really it's more of to to make sure we had people um, prepared to discuss the the various articles that we were giving recommendations on. Um, we did specifically uh, sort of table until um, uh, Capcom was able to join us on the um, two dash four article. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the questions we had, um, and I can actually, um, if I can find this. I just want to say, I don't know who actually wrote the text to the warrant article items, but it is very clear, better than I've really ever seen before. So I, uh, I, I don't know who actually wrote, up, wrote the words to it, but you know, whether I agree or disagree, it's incidental, but I can understand it, which is really good. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, KP Law, since they started doing a lot of the warrant drafting, definitely um, has, and that's I think the last couple of years, errs on the side of providing more detail rather than less detail. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel also the, the and I'm not sure if they necessarily always draft the, the background information, but that's also gotten um, uh, expanded compared to, to prior warrants. Um, so yeah. I think I think at the end of the day, between that and you know commentary we, we release, we've, we've certainly armed our citizens with uh, uh, a lot of information. Um, uh, whether they read it or not is is up to them. But uh, that the lead information to water kind there. of thing, yeah. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what did you want to talk about on two four? Well, yeah, the only uh, really the let me for, let me share this for a moment. The um, and I don't know. Uh, did your whole committee get a copy of the the script, Heather? No. Have you seen the script? No. Um, I've seen the warrant book, but that's all I've seen. So yeah. So the script is basically in 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 certain. Mm -hmm. Sure, a lot of you are familiar with this from from prior meetings mm -hmm. for the various committees. So it's basically the warrant broken down, but then it's who's making the motion, um, et cetera. Um, and usually, it's uh, with some exceptions, the motions we we sort of divvy them up between FinCom and uh, in the BOS. Um, so we've got um, Christina. Uh, formally making the motion on, on 2-4. And usually the way it goes is after the motion's made, there's a second and then there's discussion. Um, we didn't know, we st certainly didn't want to uh, steal Capcom's thunder or um, be repetitive or redundant. So, you know, one of us should certainly discuss this and, and sort of the details of this before we vote on the motion at, uh, uh, at ATM. But didn't know if you had any thoughts about um, uh, discussing this uh, on on the floor. Well, I think with the I think those are all items that we put in our capital budget um, uh, sort of assessment. It does not include everything, but those right. items were definitely on there. So, so I don't have I don't have any discussion. I don't know if the rest of the crew does. Yeah, no, I think. Um... John, uh, whoever's speaking to the motion can speak to it. I don't, I don't think we need multiple people to, to speak to the line items. Okay, great. Yeah, so then it, it makes sense for us then yeah. to speak to it so that we can give, we, we'll give our um, uh, formal recommendation FinCom uh, verbally. Um, so we'll have uh, Christina do that, which will be effectively just a summary of our, our, our commentary. Um, so, so when this speaks to they're they're coming out of free cash because one time spend I guess that's the 
<clears throat> the allowed use. Uh, are there other capital items not coming out of free cash? I mean, other than town hall, obviously, that are listed from our sheet in a different um, section? The so only just... ones that, and I'd, I'd have to go back and look at your sheet to be 100%, but I think there's a few smaller items on the sheet that are actually incorporated into, I think it's like the lease payments are incorporated into the actual budget line items. To the operating budget? Right, as well okay. as, and I think the library roof is on there too, but I think that comes in the form of an assessment. So it actually hits the line item budget. That's free cash though, John. It shows here the replaced roof is, is, uh, oh, is that the public safety building roof? Yeah, this is the public safety jack, not the library. That's the right. HVAC, yeah. Right, yeah. So I don't know the decision on, you know, why they chose certain ones for, that could be operating expense versus capital and free cash or not, but yeah, I think to your question though, I think, yeah, if it's just read through, you know, whoever's speaking, that's fine. Yeah, and I think, and I, I may have had that about the library roof. I might've had that backwards. I don't, okay. do you remember, is that, um, is that actually coming out of free cash? Because it's the way it's printed the motion, it's certainly coming out of free cash. Yeah, I'm not sure. Bob, did you look at that? Well, yeah, um, I know that that 152,638 is Hamilton share, you know, roughly 65% of the 227, I think that was um, the total after an allocation from last year. I'm not sure of the funding source. I know Wenham wanted to go forward with it, which is why we ultimately included it. Um, free cash front sounds right to me, but, I, but I'm not sure. And I know that... <clears throat> <laughs> Excuse me, Appendix D does say it's free cash, library roof. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> I was thinking that was public safety. My bad. I was thinking it was bad public safety too after you said it, but then it's yeah. specified there as being library yep. free cash. Is is there a caveat somewhere that what if one of them doesn't pass it? That is there a caveat on, on us going forward? Well, we certainly wouldn't go forward with it. If, if right, I know, but I don't see any caveats on it because this is just one that's not just strictly a Hamilton decision. So just I'm not sure. sure that we need the caveat only from the standpoint that Jim Purdy, you know, explicitly said we could go forward with it. They were, one of them was planning on doing it. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know we can if that's adequate to justify not including a caveat, but it sounded pretty solid that one of them was going to do it. Mm-hmm. I think the problem isn't the problem if, if uh, we vote positively on this and then Wenham turns it down as a line item, then we've, we've got money allocated and we have to go through an, a formal process to get that's, it out. That's what I was wondering about. If we didn't caveat it, then I wonder if, if you say, and you know, per, with the proviso that Wenham also approves it, otherwise it stays in free cash. Yeah, do we call that out with the school budgets when we vote on those? A caveat, do we require one or is it just assumed or? Well, the free cash would carry over to the next year. And if, uh, so I assume the next town meeting would deal with that. Okay, all right. Well, maybe it's a non-issue then. I just, it just, the roof, that roof in particular bugs me. So um, <laughs> just sort of the way it all came about, it's still yeah. bugging me a year later, so. But I think to have it appropriated is, is, is okay, and it would be only until fall, um, when in, assuming we had another meeting in the fall and we could be appropriated at that time. Okay. Okay. I think we're good. John, there were, there were two other items on the worksheet we forwarded to Joe um, that weren't included, and they were $35,000 for the planner uh, attachment for the John Deere loader uh, in the squad truck for $185,000. Were those kept out for the, obvious, you know, the, the seemingly obvious reason to reduce costs, or were, they, uh, were there other plans for them maybe combining with one of them or some other way to finance those? Bob, uh, those are in Schedule D. Oh. And it says they're going to be funded under the uh, their operating budget for those departments. So Schedule D in the warrant? Yeah. Uh, okay. We're Thank finally you. getting warrants with schedules attached, which is wonderful. Yeah. That's taking a long time to get there. 
Does the FinCon get involved with the classification of funds? Because <clears throat> I don't understand how it's fungible like that. They can slide a $180,000 fire truck <clears throat> as operating, but not a um, uh, police cruiser at 56,000. Because it's leased, or I assume it's it's paid off over time. Is it? I don't know. I don't think the cruises are, are leased, are they? No, they that's a purchase. That's a purchase price. It's a purchase because they have a, a residual at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the squad truck they put in one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars into the budget, so it looks like they're purchasing it, but it's not coming out of free cash. It's coming out of operations. Um, right. That's the I question. I don't Why remember. How? I don't remember what the what the uh, explanation is. I mean, we've given them advice, you know, like that's something that shouldn't really be used for free cash, but- um, I don't see the difference, <clears throat> difference between a police and a fire vehicle, but uh, more importantly with gap and accounting rules, I wonder how we can, if, if I'm assuming they're saying under the operating budget, uh, meaning expense. So I just don't know how you can treat one, one uh, asset one way and the other a uh, different. Well, it's more the other way around that you don't want to use free cash for operating. This is what I've learned from my <laughs> from my friends but, on the FinCom. Okay, so I'm but I'm assuming the free cash is cap is only allowed to be used for capital assets, not operating expenses, right? I think that's your free cash policy. The policy is to use it for one time, um, sort of unforeseen expenses, unrecurring, not, right? Not regular, yeah. recurring. Yeah. So I don't. I don't, so know. I, I don't understand it. That's all. If I were an accountant sitting with you guys, I'd be, I'd be questioning the classification. <laughs> I, I think you'd be right. It makes no sense. Police cruiser, a police cruiser is, is, a, is a normal operating expense, particularly right. on the rotation that we've been, we've been using. More so than a squad car, which strikes me as a sort of out of the ordinary. And it's operations. But I think it's a little bit different. I don't know. Maybe well, Nick can help us. It's a little yeah. bit different from a business putting things as expenses because you're deducting oh, oh, those much expenses. different. It's, yeah, it's not accounting. It's not gap rules at all. This it's is not all. gap. Why is it not gap? <laughs> because it's not. It's right. a government. Yeah. <laughs> it's a government, not a business. And they're no okay. So they're, not, the, the, they're not paying income taxes and excluding things from income taxes. Um, so, so how do you decide a capital? You have two set two different budgets, though, right? Capital and, and operating expense. No, you have capital expenditures. They're both capital expenditures, just where it's funded from. That's all. Okay. Yeah. I don't think this is the place to debate it. And, and yeah, yeah, I might be thinking more of, uh, you know, public accounting than, uh, than municipality. So. Yeah, the person that we've always relied on, uh, Marissa, to yeah. break that down for us. But it's, it's, but it really is a function of, it is a capital item. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It, uh, where it's funded is what they what we're talking about here. So, so this case, for example, free cash is paying for those patrol car, but there's another cruiser that's being paid. I think this is the year where there's a second one going out of um, the operating. But you have a you have a warrant article that says they're capital expenditures, and you have them scattered throughout the budget, as opposed to it looks like these are our only four capital items. That certainly does look like it. Plus the town hall. Well, I'm, I'm, we're not. We'll get to the town hall in a minute. But yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just following up on this. You know, if we've got the planer and the squad truck, and they're in the operating budget, you don't see them here, so they're kind of invisible. Well, the other point too is that you've got the squad truck, which is a every ten years kind of a, a expenditure, whereas a police cruiser is every year. So mm -hmm. it really makes no sense that uh, they should be swapped, in my opinion. Yeah, based on what, what we just heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I doubt we'll change anything at this point, but um, yeah. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm just stepping back from even I get the sources of funds that Nick talks about and where things come from. I'm talking about where this lands, whether it goes in an operating uh, operating expense budget or it sits on a balance sheet. And, and to me, this looks like this goes under your operating budget or budget and it's not going to sit on a balance sheet yet. A vehicle, but maybe I'm wrong, you know. But and um, I know we're not going to debate that here now because I'm sure they have life. This is like ballooning the operating budget. I mean, to have an expenditure of $185,000, which is a you know, time to time and not a regular, it, it really blows out any kind of analysis of, of an operating trend in the yeah. operations to budget, right? I think it's going to be in there if it's being funded by free cash or not, but you can't fund it. Uh, 
some of those things you shouldn't be funding from free cash. I mean, we don't want to use all our free cash. If they, if, if they need a squad car, it needs to be in their budget. It needs to show that they're, this is what the police, uh, you know, or the fire are, are spending. Exactly. Like if they're buying a new big vehicle every year and that's why it's in there. It's in the fire budget. Well, it, it, yeah, exactly. I, I, I'm agreeing, Christina, exactly with you because, it, you know, we don't buy squad trucks every year and they don't go buy a fire engine every year because those things are over half a million dollars or $800,000 or something like that. Oh, they do buy a squad car every year. They buy seven. Oh, yeah, they buy three, right? You typically, it's a rotation. They do. They buy a squad car every year, and one year they buy two, and something like five years they buy two. No, Nick, right. I'm talking about the squad truck, which is just this fire, this, uh, it's their rough terrain truck that they go put out forest fires with. If we ever oh, no, I'm fire. sorry. I thought you were talking about the police cruisers. Yeah, no, police cruisers are a different deal. So, but a police cruiser, if it's happening every year, would be part of the operating budget. Exactly. Where a, where a squad truck would be a capital, an unusual capital expense every 10 years or so. Exactly. So that's the reason, that's the question I think we're debating. Yeah, I think it's misclassified myself. But you're not, it's not a classification, it's whether we're using free cash for it or not. We don't want, them, we don't want to spend all our free cash. We don't want ever, them to move everything into free cash. Mm -hmm because we, we run out of free cash and we don't want to do that. Um, you know, it's, it's, I, I, in some ways, I'm a little confused by what you're asking, because isn't it the Capcom is job to put down everything that's being capitalized yep. and then funding of it is not, is, is done in a different, is, is done separately. Yeah. And it's not. Absolutely. Yep. That's, we put it in our budget and we're just asking about where you're funding it. Right. So in terms of where they fund it, there's several places. One is operating and one is in the, um, uh, in, in, they can, in this case, it's free cash. Um, bonding would be another one. And I'm just, I'm just operating, meaning future taxes. Uh, I'm only questioning because you have an article that says capital expenditures. I think really that's, it's, the title is not, may, may not be accurate. It's capital expenditures it's for free capital, cash. It's for capital expenditures and free cash. There are many other, there are a few other capital expenditures elsewhere. That's correct. Yeah, so maybe the article could be more clear as to why. Okay. It's not all capital expenditures. It's the ones that are going to be paid for out of free cash. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think as a as a practical relationship matter, our virtual world this year has made it difficult to clearly communicate and parse out all of this. Uh, and in the uh, haste to reduce the town budget, uh, along with whatever the schools did so that we come below the prop two and a half precipice I think uh, communications were sparse, and but for the pandemic, we might have some clear answers. Um, apologies, my my microphone's been on mute. And I, <laughs> I thought I thought you had disappeared. I was, I was wondering why. I'm like, I can't get a word in here edgewise. <laughs> I thought you were being very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really apologize. A um, couple of things, we, we had made a specific comment on the, and I don't have the actual mailed warrant in front of me, but that the schedule should be clear, whatever that is, Schedule D, because the capital program has more than, than is just in Article 2-4, um, that you should re that it should reference the other articles where for right. town hall is being voted on and 2-3 for the operating line items. Um, because we thought, we thought the same thing. It's, it's, it's misleading to have all these things on the capital program that aren't necessarily in the actual 2-3 article. Yes. In an article Other, entitled capital expenditures, it just, it just doesn't seem complete in my head. Yeah. The other thing, and I, I need to confirm this because I need to actually look at the line items, but I thought it was my recollection that there was some sort of lease program in place for the squad truck that we're not actually spending 185 this year but we'll be spending, and I could be wrong about this, so jump in if anyone else from FinCom. Uh, 
but I thought that it wasn't the full 185 that was actually being appropriated for. It was just a portion of that. And so for example, the squad truck, it's treated like a capital asset. There'll be depreciation for balance sheet purposes, but different from sort of public accounting, there's no, there's no P&L that you, that you have depreciation against, but it is treated as a capital asset, anything on your program, I believe. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, Schedule I, D I, has it. Schedule D doesn't show it as a lease. It has all of it. So yeah, I, I think Schedule D is much clearer than the R. So <clears throat> that's what I'm looking at now. Um, yeah. But I will, uh, I'll confirm what the actual amount that's actually spent being spent in the uh, budget before, before Saturday. Okay. Um, might be a point of clarification we make that it's not, we're not actually spending 185,000 on the, on the truck. If that's, the, if that's, if that's correct. And I just, I need to confirm that. John, if yeah. I could just um, if I could just add something to to help your discussion, uh, it's Diane. Oh, oh, hey, Diane. Hi. Um, I did want to confirm that it is a lease purchase and it is part of the budget and it's um, it's in the budget for thirty nine thousand six forty five. There we go. Okay, good. There we yeah. go. Thank you, and, Diane. Mm -hmm. Sure, no problem. And the planner attachment also it's not actually part of the budget because um, Tim was wondering whether or not it should be in there at all. Um, but Joe wanted to keep it in there. There was talk about not purchasing at all. And there was also discussion, discussion as to whether or not it could be funded through chapter 90. That's right. So there's a good chance we might actually get, okay. So it's actually in the budget, but it's not. The planner is not, no. So it's on your capital um, appendix there, uh, um, but it, it's not reflected in the budget as is the uh, lease payment for the squad truck. Uh, okay. Um, so I, yeah, that's, that's sort of, hmm. it, uh, it would be in the schedule. Appendix D says it's in operations, Diane. I, hmm. I know we, we've had discussions back and forth about that because Tim uh -huh. wanted to have it removed, but I believe Joe wanted to keep it in there. So okay. that's why it's still in there, but I, it is not part of the operating expense at the moment, at the moment. Either one. No, no, no. The, the lease payment for the squad truck is, okay. that's 39000 That's in your fire okay. department. But okay. the planer is not. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for yeah. clarifying. So the no fund, yeah, I, mean, the funding, I would say. Diane, the funding source would just be uh, Chapter 90. It, that's exactly what I was going to say. Though. That yeah, is true. That's, yeah. That's, that's what it, we should. It, yeah. If it yeah. gets approved as such. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's, it's basically, we're either going to get Chapter 90 funding or we're not actually going to be buying it. Purchase it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. right. True. Yeah, so probably nothing we can do at this point in time, but if we need to clarify it at ATM, we can. And for future, that kind of situation, we would just, uh, we would change that on the on the schedule. I think that makes sense. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, Anybody have Yeah, so that else? I think is 2-4. Um, mm -hmm. Were there other things you wanted to, to discuss, Heather? I just wanted to be clear on the funding that we're asking for the town meeting about the town hall, because the numbers don't add up to the total anymore. And I, I, I'm, I don't have the text to just see if people are gonna, how it's gonna be presented. But, you know, when I add up these couple of articles, you know, we're in the 4.4. So I just was curious about that. What are you looking at, Heather? Article 214 and Article 215. Well, we've already spent, Heather, we've already spent over about a million one. Yeah. Okay, so a million one. Mm -hmm. I think it's a million one plus 4.475 from CPC, right? And then, you know, non CPC is 3.4. So I get I get to about 9 million. I think that's okay. correct. Yeah, 8. Point, it, it comes out to about 8.7 8, 8. is about the total. Right? Okay. All right. It's, it's eight six seven one is the yeah. uh, what we think we're working with right now. That's the okay. latest numbers I have. Okay. Right. So All three right. point four will, will will come through the general fund is what it comes down to. Yep. Right. So two dash fifteen is for three point four. So I noticed way back in the. 
Article 2.6, you're taking you know, 400,000 from water enterprise and, and putting it in the general fund. Um, that's, a, that's a standard thing that we normally do. Yeah, that's for essentially the town employees whose payroll is on the, uh, um, the general fund, uh, the work they do for the water and air prize. Got it. Um, so yeah, so every year there's a certain amount that's transferred. Okay. Well, I just was comparing it to the CP, you know, the general fund for the 3.4, so. Okay, thanks. Anybody else have any questions? Bill, Dave, Bob, Jack? I, I just wanted to kind of get some thoughts from the committee, um, you know, on their thoughts, you know, on the town hall spend. <clears throat> definitely, I definitely think we, it needs improvements, but, and I went through kind of the read, you know, the write up looks great, you know, talks about safety, mechanical compliance, all that. And did you guys have any, you know, discussions around kind of, you know, the traffic flow of the town hall needs and wants. And, and really where I'm going with is, you know, from the work we did on the five-year outlook, um, I don't know that I've heard a lot of communication about competing priorities that are out there. Um, you know, whether it's the water, you know, we've got a huge issue with water in the town and, uh, a lot, and some of the numbers I've seen could be another 9 million in water. You know, the schools, you know, over their 10-year look, there, there's a good 25 million of identified line items. And I'm just curious of the thoughts of, you know, how every year, if we have a sense or the FinCom has a sense of, you know, what they think, is there like a, a budgeted amount we should prioritize that we can spend each year in capital, regardless of the sources, and instead of just like every year hitting a nine, 10 million number, or is that your number you think is okay for the next five years? Because my concern is, you know, we've got competing priorities and I haven't heard a lot of discussion of all of them in one, in one breath or sentence or discussion. Uh, so I get concerned that year after year, the next next year it's schools or water, and then the following it's the other. So did you have discussions, any concerns about impact and capital needs going forward? If we're, you know, I, I won't say we're draining CPC, we're, gonna, we're using a lot of it. And I will, I am a little concerned about other needs out of that fund. Although I did read through and it sounds like there is a, there is some numbers there, but the money's got to come somewhere. So, I mean, that that's part of it. And then- there's two things I think that we're we're looking at here on um, on the town hall. I, I don't think there's a a real question of whether the town hall needs to be done or renovated. It's just a question of when. When is that going to be done? Um, and the uh, so let's let's look at that. And the first thing we looked at is okay if we're going to renovate it, when should we do it? And if we look at all the the way things have lined up, we've already spent a certain amount of money. And the big issue, of course, is the CPC funds. And we're getting, we have an opportunity to, to draw four point, uh, that's about four. 4.4. 4. 4. 4. 4. I think is for the CPC, which is, cannot be used for new construction. It cannot be used for uh, schools, for example. It can only be minimally used for fields because of the way it's, the, the fields are defined. So, uh, the, our question there was, are there any other competing projects for the CPC funds? And we've, I went through that with, with the guys um, in the, the, uh, the in that group, and th there are no, no, there's nothing on the table. I think I shouldn't say nothing. There's a couple of things on the table which they are yeah. intending to fund. And there are still funds left over it, and they could fund another million or million and a half, roughly, uh, if, if they wanted to go into doing any long-term capital projects, uh, long-term funding. So there's a there's funds available in CPC, and it's not competing with anything that's on the table now. So that's one way we needed to fund the uh, the, the town hall project because if we don't do that. And we, if we started from scratch, for example, and built new, then it would be all on the taxpayer. Um, then the, the other piece where you're talking about capital items and specifically schools, I think that's the big one coming up. If the, the schools, they have not presented us with anything in there uh, that they've got coming forward. I don't know that it would be another 10 years before we would start funding that. They're starting to look at it more this year 
but uh, we've talked about schools for, I think it's been at least seven or eight years, but they've not come up with any uh, plans as to what they need and how they're going to uh, pre present it. So at this point, there's, it could be 25 million, but it's not, it could be 10 years in the future. Now they provided a 10 year schedule um, and Joe has it. We went through it in detail and it's by year, by line item. Here's that. And they even said, you know, this year, you know, they, they were going to pass to continue studies. They were dealing with, uh, you know, the building committees to see if they could get some funding and grants, but there's a lot of, a lot of work that, that, that they, they said they'll initiate next year. You know, it, it looks up to be about, you know, two and a half to three and a half million a year on a go Great. forward. They're not going to. They're not going to be ready to come to us for money for years. They don't have any projects that are. I mean, if they decide to build a new school, it's not a facility school. stuff, right? It's I mean, not just a school. It's you know, building a new school. There are specific. You guys have items. a schedule, right? We sent it to you when we met early on. I mean, do you have a liaison for the schools within your group? Yeah. I mean, so we considered that. We've looked at that. There's no, there's nothing else that the CPC. For the foreseeable future, can use that money for. Yeah, no, no, so no. So we're not no, taking I'm it not away talking, from. Yeah, uh, we're not talking CPC anymore. He moved on to other competing priorities, <clears throat> right? So we're talking about the schools and water. You know, the water, and and I'm sure I know Dave. If Dave wants to speak to that, he's had a lot of meetings with Tim. But <clears throat> my point being, and I'm not arguing against you know any one of them. I'm just saying there's a lot of them. So have we looked at it holistically and and said, hey, it makes sense for us to fund X amount of priorities over the next five years <clears throat> coming from these entities these departments as opposed to you know every year it's one big one and it's yeah. a surprise to the yeah community. and that's why we're you know, i think I mean, the one thing that we that we should point out here is and and i think you're aware of it that the water is coming from an enterprise fund and that would be handled that's not part of the taxes that's well, not, uh, not, not not that way. Nick, Nick, uh, Nick uh, you're not going to fund uh, the out of fees. No, you kill everybody. That, <laughs> we're looking at nine or ten million dollars uh, as an ask uh, over the next five years from uh, Tim for water. That's not going to come out of the enterprise fund. We did. This is why we need a master plan. This is why we all supported the master plan to look at this. What is coming up? What do we need? What are the priorities? We have a master plan for water already. It was produced in 2019. And in there, there are two focuses. One is on the nuts and bolts, the pipes, the storage areas. That's the nine to 10 that, that Tim is already putting in his budget. But then there's the whole other issue about sources, which is not in any budget yet, which could be a, a it's going to be some number. I'm not sure what large number sure so, and it's a big problem and there's a lot of stuff coming up and yes we're looking at it and we're thinking about it and we need to the people of the town need to decide do we want open spaces and to have higher real estate taxes do we want more development to spread those taxes wider it's it's big decisions that people yeah so make. as these properties come up you mentioned open space that would be cpc funding right like sagamore some of that money. I mean, we're not going to have the money, but it's going to be preserve tied up. open space. But that doesn't preserving open space doesn't help us with our reducing our real estate taxes. Um, right, but I'm just so I'm just, development, uh, commercial developments might help with that. Um, well, but every time something comes up, those kinds of things get voted down because people don't want them. So right. it's. I mean, there's just a big dispute about. They um, want the town to buy the property, right? And where would they, how would they buy it? They would probably use some CPC funding and other things that, you know, the town hall is going to, the point is, and, and definitely absolutely want to make it clear. I'm not saying, <clears throat> you know, I, I support the town hall. It's kind of the center of, of our community. Uh, I just don't feel like we've discussed all the other competing priorities. I know we, early in the process, we talked about the need and importance of doing that. I haven't seen that come out anywhere. You know, it would have been nice if even during this, this meeting, uh, the town meeting, that that was a discussion. Hey, we want everybody to be aware of what's coming down the pike in this town because there's a lot of spend. When we so, submitted our report to, to Joe, we suggested that in the letter that we sent him, which I know you guys saw, because we really feel that we're not, we're, we're being single issue voters all the time. And, and sometimes you just need to start telling people what are some of the big expenditures coming down the pike because it just helps in the decision-making just like you do in your own personal budgets. Right, well, we agreed we need to look at all those things yeah we, but i just uh, don't i just don't think we're doing it so that's that was well I, fincom has made an effort in the past in terms of its introductory comments and uh, other uh, editorial 
assessments to forewarn people of these exact issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've started, you know, this uh, so-called umbrella group, Heather. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, purposes from my viewpoint is to uh, organize these discussions, just as you and Bill and uh, others from your group have initiated this evening so that we can coordinate and foresee and find uh, uh, common ground to communicate to the public. Before we can communicate to the public, we have to get our own internal act together. Uh, and we haven't been able to adequately communicate this evening responses to some of your good questions. Uh, I've suggested that some of the awkwardness this year is based upon the virtual world we live in. And, uh, and then Marissa's leaving. It's been a, a bit of a cascade of difficulties. Uh, we ought to be aware of all that going forward. And we ought to use the umbrella concept to further the discussion that we're having this evening. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes any, any sense to you. Is. But we are, we are definitely the two bodies in town that are thinking longer term and how to fund them. So maybe we ought to spend some more time chatting amongst ourselves in addition. Yeah. That's fine. No, and I, I would, you know, just to echo other comments, <coughs> these are, you know, the questions that are being asked and these same questions are gonna be asked at ATM are, are absolutely the right questions. Um, and I think part of the, the difficulty specifically with this project is, um, you know, you've got to look at, I think with the town hall, you've got to look at it as, okay, you know, is it an if or a when? And, you know, I'm relatively convinced it's a, it's a when. It's something that sort of has to be done. The question is at, at what scale and, and, you know, how, you know, cost effective can we make it? And just from a timing point of view, I, I think the work that's been done has gotten at as low as possible. Um, certainly from the, um, the tax side, the, the appropriation side, um, the, uh, you know, there's a huge chunk of that coming from the CPC, which potentially you know, limits future CPC uses. But um, in terms of the context of other projects, I, part of the difficulty is also that while we know there are big expenses looming, the town hall is the most baked of all of those projects. Um, water, we know it's going to be significant expenses. I still don't think, you know, that nine to 10, if it's, you know, is that how, how firmly baked really is that, is that number? And I don't think the analysis has been done. How much can be borne out of infrastructure charges versus are going to have to be out of the, out of the general fund. Um, the school, I, I think is even certainly for facilities. You know, they've been waiting to be accepted to that program so that the, the state could potentially cover a huge portion of those new facilities. But I mean, let's be let's be realistic. A lot of that stuff is just it's not the, the biggest ticket items, I think, are, are probably still a few years down the road. And if we don't do the town hall now and we have to do something with the town hall, once those projects are fully baked, um, there's no way we could fund. We probably can fund the town hall at the same time. Um, that being said, so it, it's 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 tough. I mean, we've 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 certainly wrestled with it, um, and I think it's it's for that reason it's not completely surprising that it failed at the polls last fall, and we're going to see what what happens this spring. Um, and, I think it, I think the funding so the way the way it's modeled is perfect. I mean, it is set up nicely with the uses of funds that'll minimize you know tax impact. Uh, so yeah, I think. It is fully baked, you know, now's the time to go. And if it, it's a two thirds vote, right? So if it doesn't, you know, it didn't pass last time, we'll see. And, but, um, but it's much, I think it's much, it's better structured this time. I guess my only last question would be, you know, since it does rely on future matching, what if those programs are not funded in the future by the, the state? Which programs are you speaking of? The matching principle for CPC funds. This is probably what, 30 year uh, payback, right? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, like, like we're relying on the, the state to fund the program for the next, I don't know how many years, but a lot. So I'm just wondering if those don't come, where do, who picks up the uh, that uh, that payment? Does that go into the general fund or how do we pay for that if we're not getting the match anymore? 
Bill, debt service does not come out of the match. Debt service only comes out of the 2%. You can't use the match for debt service for something like this. Yeah, I think Bill's saying though that there, even though it's that's the way it's structured, you can't use the, the match for capital. Well, you are you are using the match for other things, and so that you're impacting other things. Is that what you're saying, Bill? Yeah, yeah, and both really. Like, yeah, I didn't know you couldn't use any of the match, but I said no, so. We would match for the for, for so C if the pro but if the program went away, would we still have a two percent? I guess we'd have to, right? Because it we would have to right to. And I think what would happen is you you then everything else that the CPC does would get squeezed because right. so that two percent is going to be allocated towards the, the the debt service. So a lot of the matching is then helping us for for things CPC spends money on. So that would certainly get start getting squeezed if if the matching program went away. Right. Not, not to say it, it, not to say it would. But. I was going to say there's not really any evidence that it's that there would. I don't think there's even discussion on that from a state level. Yeah, but, but thirty it, years is a long period of time. So, you know. Yeah, it depends. You know, we've got we're going into a world of infrastructure base and roads, transportation, bandwidth, telecommunications. I think the money that the state and the federal government, you know, drive their programs towards, you know, might not be what it's been in the past. But I, th it could. I think it you can't fund everything. I think it's right. good to bear in mind too that there are two other sources of funds which are going to come into play down the road. The, the schools, I believe, are counting for their athletic facilities, at least, and perhaps other things, on private donations. They've talked about that. I, I haven't seen any evidence that they've moved in that direction, but that's something they're certainly talking about as a serious source of funds for whatever they want to get done. And the other <laughs> is debt is going to run off. The debt will run off on the Donovan Field. It's going to run off on Sagamore. It's going to run off on various other projects that we've had going in the past. So mm -hmm. the overall hit uh, isn't necessarily isn't gonna isn't gonna be as bad as we may think it's going to be. Remember, we tried to get a hundred thousand dollars to study the water situation because there were so many questions there as mm -hmm. to what the sources of supply were and all the rest of it, and they were turned down. That said, that, that they said we're just not going to do that. So that's kind of left us in limbo with this, as far as the water is concerned. And right, this is year two, Jack. Remember, we've asked for our two years in a row. Yeah been turned down twice and we really think it's an important piece of it so i you know yeah i mean would we're help just us. passing in the dark there and and frankly if which is in the same boat so <clears throat> i think there's there's and i'm i'm told that that our the great and general court is considering various reallocations and things of that nature there's all kinds of questions as far as the water program is concerned the only thing we really know is that the Isthmus river can probably continue to supply us at the level that we've been at which everybody feels is inadequate. But <clears throat> they, the, the answer we always get is we're only using 60% of our allocation. I strongly wonder whether or not the other 40% is there given the condition of the river at the end of every, every uh, summer's <laughs> consumption. So, so just using the water study as an example, uh, I had thought at least that it was part of what was coming before us for ATM. And uh, at some point in the progression of documents, the production of repetitive documents, uh, <laughs> it, it disappeared. Uh, I was unaware that FinCom had any discussion about that. I think we were told, well, the BOS decided not to go forward with it. I don't know. Well, it, it, it's more of a, the discussion that was, that was, that was had at, uh, and I think it was a, a group discussion, if I recall, and Christina Stepan, if I've uh, got that wrong. Um, uh, it was a it was a worry about spending the money and appropriating the money now because of bandwidth concerns, especially with with the master plan being kicked off. Um, but in, you know, we certainly, from a FinCom's perspective. Um, it's more delaying it to STM, or I think at, at, at worst next year's ATM. But we're certainly in favor of the the uh, the study. Um, so I don't think it's a. Um, but you can't, you know, once again, you can't keep kicking the can down the road. Would uh, you? Would you? Maybe we should. We haven't. At least I hadn't thought about it. Um, putting forth and see if we could get it on the special town meeting in the fall. I hadn't thought about that because we we were told to wait another year with it. So. Um, yeah, no, I, you should, you should certainly raise that again because okay. 
remember correctly, it was more, we thought that it, you, it may be a way to uh, save money, conserve some cash, really just from a timing perspective, because not um, there might not be the bandwidth to actually do anything about it until we actually got into FY22. Um, but it may be perfect timing to do that in at STM um, because right. it's, you know we, we, we can't keep kicking water down the road. Right, right. Well, the, there, you know, the source is, as everybody just said, is important, but actually what's in Tim's budget and what he's pushing forward, you know, came out of the 2019 study and there's not universal agreement on what's in those items. So I think having a conversation about that will be something that all people, all 12 of us on this call will get involved in. Yeah, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there was also some talk about not wanting to start a process until we potentially, it was very clear what we were, you know, commissioning the study for. Mm -hmm. We well, wrote up, we, we being Dave primarily wrote up a, a nice proposal. So we have at least an outline that we could, we could play with, but it's, I would say a, it's a large percentage done already. I think the feeling too, was that it was a water enterprise expenditure and not a general fund expenditure, as I recall. And I, I'm not sure I agree with that either. Mm -hmm. um, yes, which I, 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 I'm not sure I do either, Jeff. Um, and that was, and, you know, that was, that was the question. I think, I think originally it was. Um, Who makes that call? It's, uh, well, really, it's a, you know. Electman. I mean, it's, it's the board effectively the BOS town manager, we're certainly way in on what we think the proper funding source should be uh, as income. But then they would present that as a, as a warrant article. Um, but that's, a, that's a policy question. That can't be done by the town manager. That has got to be done by the board of selectmen as a matter of policy. Oh yeah, no, I don't, I don't think it was, it was certainly not Joe. Uh, um, okay. It was certainly with. with I'm just thinking process. about how I'm going to frame my request for the special town meeting. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to mention one other thing um, with regard to uh, longer term planning or you know planning over the next few years. I mentioned to the Capcom that um, John and Nick have been working on a um, wait. What are we calling that? A forecast of like a budget forecast, um, an Excel spreadsheet where you can, um, where we can try to kind of see like if our, if our expenditure, you know, various areas, how much it would be, what that, what effect, what effect that has on the tax rate in the future. We're looking mostly at whether, um, and at what point we're gonna have a proposition two and a half, um, you know, what, when that's gonna, when and if, if and when that's gonna be triggered. Um, but that's a place to look at also our capital expenditures over the years and try to even those out or limit them and somehow, or, or somehow just evaluate what we can really afford to spend per right. year. Right, and that's the, and then really that's the, the output is, is what is, you know, being able to run a bunch of assumptions through there and, you know, are we going to hit prop two and a half override situation as well as what's, what's the, you know, what are future year tax rates um, going to look like. And one of the big, you know, you know, assumptions that you have to play with is, or what are those capital spends and what is that debt service going to be like each yeah. year? Because I think <laughs> yep. when we had projections in the past too, too often, they were driven off by just averaging, you know, expenditures over the prior three or four years. And the problem is just things can throw those averages off and they're just, they're not, they're, they're not, a, they're not a really good way to then predict the future. Um, the best way certainly is with with looking at specific projects um, and how it's going to affect the bottom line. Well, then making assumptions about you know, okay, school spend can only grow at this percent, and town spend can only grow at this percent, et cetera. Yeah, um, that's awesome. That, that, I love that. I mean, that, that that's a great model. You know, then we can make it an affordability, and we could say to your point, you know, schools can spend this or you know, this is our budget. This is what we can spend every year. And that'll force us to have those conversations Dave talked about uh, and get all the priorities on the table and not talk, um, talk about them singularly each year and say, what do we want to do? What should take place first? You know, a town hall, a water, 
you know, water infrastructure work or a school or whatever. I know they're all in different stages of being completed, but it allows us for longer term planning than just, you know, fiscal year planning. Well, that's, that's exactly right. And really where you want to get to is then, you know, agreeing on what those assumptions should be so that, you know, you know, town can only spend this much, school can only spend at this growth rate. And then, you know, ideally from a long-term project is we have this much to spend each year, either free cash or a combination of debt service. So then all the projects have to fit in. And if they don't, for example, turf fields, then they would know you're going to have to raise, say, 50, 60% from private funds right. or other projects, exactly. um, or we need to find state matching or state funding for school facilities or other things. Um, I like it. And we've got to live within whatever you know policies and rules we set. You know, back to both Heather and uh, Bill's question about what are we doing long term. I think that's a cr critical area that we wrestle with every time we speak because we we know that as expenditures are accelerating faster than what our reserves are and what our um, growth rate is, uh, it, we're going to get pinched, and right. um, we're the town is fighting itself when it says we don't want growth in this town that's great then you're going to have to pay for it and so it's a uh, and it's it, we and i'm not saying that that's it's one way or the other we we have to look at the whole picture and say can we do commercial work somewhere can we uh, in my mind one of the places is um gordon Comwell. you know if we could take that complex and buy it and or somebody buy it and become a office park it doesn't change the character of the town, but it changes the revenue. You know, that would be a beautiful thing. And that's the kind of a thing that we have to be looking at creatively uh, in the town, because otherwise we're going to get, it's going to come and hit us at some point, Heather. It's just going to. Yeah. 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 And we're, we're not sure that you know, everybody in the world is a, a single issue person. You know, you're either hundred percent for the town hall, you're hundred percent for water, you're hundred percent for schools and you know, there aren't a lot of people in the middle there. <laughs> I tell you, I think the other financial engine, the possibility is, is with the school, that's smart growth. And that it could be a commercial engine for the town as well, as along with a certain amount of housing. So there are a lot of possibilities that are there that could be used and done without de destroying the character of life in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a good example is look what's going on out in uh, the Meadowbrook farm. It's a, a big area that then now you see signs all over the place. It's going to ruin our path and our trails. But the trails are on probably on private property. I don't get it. You know, and, and uh, so you stop the growth there and you, you have a potential of about $750,000 in, in revenue uh, from those, that, that uh, development. Uh, so, it's, it, so the town fights itself. I, I don't, I, it gets frustrating. <laughs> You can't, we can't have our cake and eat it too, right? So it's the same thing that happened exactly right. with, the, with the with the Perry property right here, right? You know, there's five or six homes down there. That's it, you know, yeah. because that's what the town. That's the direction the town went in. So you know, you're right. So, we're fighting ourselves. So our our responsibility is to educate, and before we educate the public, we have to educate ourselves. Mm -hmm. But one theme I think here is. It's improvident and short-sighted to be a one-issue person, mm -hmm. because uh, what good are the schools without water? What what right. good are the right. schools without roads that are usable, without right. public safety, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And so, the town hall too. <laughs> yes, yeah. So we need to, uh, as volunteers, I respectfully think we have to get our own act together and something that Heather and I tried to do a while ago and maybe is gonna happen again is to get some coordination between our respective groups and to get momentum, Heather, if it has to be Capcom and FinCom to begin the process, that's mm -hmm. fine. However, we can gain some momentum. Well, I think because it, it all ties back to finances, you know, no matter what issue you start with, so. We, we have to educate the public and ultimately we're governed by the public's determination. Yeah, yeah no, I agree 100%, Dave. And, and to Nick's point too, we, we need more revenue sources to pay for these things. Right. So we gotta get so, creative. So people are gonna be critical of the uh, 
HDC appropriation this year, that's a very narrow view. So long as the HDC is kept to its charge to uh, seek to develop commercial right. sources, it's, it's an investment well made, quite apart from personality. And that's, I think we have to be supportive of that kind of approach. Agree. Well, good work, everybody. Okay. Well, um, thank you, luck. thank you, thank you, FinCom, for indulging us. We appreciate it. Well, no, this is this is great discussion, and, and, it's not and an really, indulgence. it's not really an indulgence. I, we need you guys. We need to talk. Oh, to absolutely. You much That's, more often. Right, I agree because we're all interested in the same thing. So, all right, we'll put our mighty powers together. <laughs> no, I, it's I, I really. <laughs> Just over since your your inception, I mean, it's I just remember years you know prior to there being a Capcom, it was sort of like, well, what are we going to get for capital requests this year? And just having sort of no idea, and it's, um, I, you know, I, I think we're just beginning that sort of planning process, and we've we still got a lot of work to do. Yeah, to, we would we would agree with um, you. We're we're just trying to figure out how to present ourselves. It's only been two cycles, and I think we're getting smarter each cycle. But so we'll see. No, you're, you're, you're asking the right questions. Absolutely. We could definitely work our, you know, you've seen our, our schedule, right? We could link that into this model you're building and have that fly through and, and, and figure out tax increases and debt and all that. It could be a module. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I, I would see it. Absolutely. And as we post sort of ATM, as we start, start to get to a point where we're going to want to start sharing it with, uh, with people, which we're pretty close. Yeah. Uh, we'd then love to have, uh, you know, we should probably do a joint meeting and have um, have you comment on it. What, what's the best way to, you know, incorporate capital into the assumptions without having it sort of, you know, implode because of its own weight? Um, you know, there's 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 only so much sort of detail you can get in there, which then um, you've got you've just got to make you know base assumptions. But I think that uh, we'd love to have your input. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can create schedules that are detailed and then drive them at a high level into into yours. Exactly. And that's why we have Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. Kick, I'll help you kick the tires on your model. I've built a lot of financial models, so uh, I've got some history there. That'd be great. We'll we'll definitely take idea. you up on that, Bill. Oh, that would cool. be a very good idea. Okay. All right. Are we? I guess uh, Capital Committee. We're ready to adjourn. I think they're done with us, Evan. <laughs> okay. All, thank you very Stay much. Stay as long as you'd like. Yeah. Thank you all for having day. us. You guys are very much appreciated. I appreciate yeah. all you're doing. Good luck Saturday. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. Nice. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Capital committee adjourn. Heather Ford. Dave Thompson. Thompson. Jack Lawrence. Bill Wilson. Peace out. Okay. <laughs> be well. Be well. Right. Yeah, be well. Take care, like everyone. This. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. All right. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. What's what's Saturday? <laughs> <laughs>
So the change is just to reduce those steps to reflect the 25 hours as opposed to the 37 and a half hours. Um, so I assume I'm looking at Diane's email right now. So they're gonna they're gonna have a handout uh, uh, passed out at the uh, um, at the town meeting um, just to make that correction. But uh, I assume our recommendation on that article still stands. Um, but uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's actually a net positive. It's re, it's reducing the the uh, um, salary in, in future for future steps. Um, all right. So the only thing I think we have, unless anyone has any updates from like that, is um, uh, at least a brief discussion on the composition of a uh, fincom, um, which, as we know, we are. Uh, we're going to hold on to Valerie as long as we can, but <laughs> at some point between the beginning and the middle of June, we're going to uh, to lose uh, to lose Valerie. Um, can we can we get, uh, outline who is who is actually leaving uh, this this year? Who's leaving? Or Valerie, who's, we know yes, but uh, from a from a um, who's up a cycle standpoint? Who's up? Who's coming off the cycle? Someone sent that to us somewhat recently. Who yes. would have sent that? <laughs> Very good question, Nick. I'm just trying to see, is it on the website? No, I, I know that one of the uh, the two women, uh, one of either Valerie or Christina, replaced somebody and was on a uh, short term. And oh was... yeah, it's actually it's actually you, Christina. Yeah. Um, can I make an assumption that you're <laughs> you're, you're, you're taking you're, over this year? You're, you're going to be yeah, exactly. It's, it's the whole succession plan to <laughs> <laughs> that uh, you'll be re-upping for uh, another term? Yeah, I don't feel like I can leave yet. Good. Yeah, so I've got it in front of me. So then uh, uh, Valerie and my, we're, we're in the same year, which is 2022. So we've got another, I've got another year left after this. Whoever's filling Valerie's um, seat would then have a, another year. Um, and then you and you and David are through uh, 2023. Like. <laughs> We've been snookered. <laughs> we, we're saying, oh, we'll do one more year for everybody. <laughs> no, you're gonna do another one. <laughs> David and I have spoken. I and I, um, I think it'd be imprudent of us to to just walk away with. John and, and Christina, and then and everybody else being new. So I think that would we are. The question is, how do we do this? And um, David, are you thinking of staying for another year? If you are, yes, <laughs> and I will. <laughs> I'll capitulate to that too. <laughs> then, with with Christina's uh, approval, I shall also. Uh, so. I so looks like we're headed toward having to replace Valerie, unfortunately, with regrets, and we ought to uh, try to recruit some associate people. No, I, I think that's right. I think we uh, and I was going to suggest we we you know let let Sean know that we we should have something posted at least on the the POS meetings and say now first of all for the the open position we're going to have. And, but at least for one associate, um, but, but certainly anyone that's, anyone that's remotely interested, whether it be it, if they can commit to a, you know, full-time position or an associate, the associate is likely to become at some point relatively soon, a, a full voting member. Right. Um, and you might include that in your uh, message at ATM. Oh, no, uh, that's, that's actually, uh, I'm glad you said that. That's a good point. Um, 
I will make a note of that now. Yeah, I will, I'll definitely uh, let people know. What happened to our, the gentleman who was uh, uh, with us for a few sessions? Remember he was with, he was feeding his urchin and uh, uh, he's, have you had any contact with him? No comment, content. Uh, contact since that that one meeting, one or two meetings that he attended. I'll I'm going to reach out to him again and see if there's any interest. But I'm I'm good. Um, <laughs> so there was certainly opportunity for him, and I'm not even sure he went to uh, to town hall and filled out a, uh, the the form. Right. Um, so um, <clears throat> what what's the uh, the town website? In addition to BOS announcing, I mean, we can use, or some of you at least, can use social media to uh, promulgate interest, attempt to promulgate uh, interest. I can put a post on the town Facebook, the residents Facebook page. That'd be great. It's probably a good way to get yeah. some word out. John, are you on a Facebook, the town Facebook page? I actually not, I'm really not on Facebook. Um, See, it looks like you're the only one because I I don't go onto the Facebook. I don't I think David does either. No, no. <laughs> I heard it can get uh, quite uh, uh, contentious. I guess is the right word. <laughs> I hear it occasionally from Kathy, but I <laughs> I keep myself at distance. <laughs> um, I can think of at least one person. I'll I'll. Um try to approach about it. Oh, yay. That's great. Oh, that's fantastic. That's just not a lawyer, right? <laughs> I don't know. We've, we've, oh, no. we've had a lot of success <laughs> with it, so. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I thought it, I'd better be quiet because we get somebody any better. It's better than nothing. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> just commitment, please. Commitment. Um, yeah, so, uh, all right, so I think we, we know what we'll, we'll be doing, but any, certainly, like, you know, if you've got any knowledge of people that might be interested, uh, let them know that uh, don't hold back. <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone has any other, other updates. I don't think I do. Um, uh, none I can think of that aren't related to things we've already discussed or, or ATM. Valerie, what's your schedule? How, how long, how much longer will we have you with us? I will technically be a resident of Hamilton until June uh, 16th. Oh, that's right. Our birthday, Christina, and my birthday. Oh, nice. You can have a big celebration that day. <laughs> birthday, birthday going away. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be here until then. Okay. okay. Yeah, hopefully we can, weather will be nice and we could potentially actually meet in person outside the, uh, um, for the uh, traditional goodbye drink. Yes, <laughs> what, wouldn't, wouldn't that be nice to get together again? Oh my oh, gosh. That, that would. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, would... I have to say, I'm feeling it coming. It's coming, it's coming. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling optimistic and, and thankfully it's, I feel a lot worse about things if we were if it was like November now and we we're heading into cold weather. Right. Yeah, um, but with outdoors, I think that's that's really going to help. Um, and a lot of people, you know, being vaccinated, I think that in the outdoor weather is really going to help. So, so, John, John, may I suggest that uh, at our next meeting post ATM, we really drill down on the uh, model. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's really I, I look at post ATM. Uh, the key things we have on our agenda is, is that modeling and that, that, that exercise. And uh, um, to the extent it take, takes time in a meeting is finding, finding additional uh, members. Okay. Um, but those are the, the, the uh, things on, on my list, but I think that makes sense. All right, if there's nothing else, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor, start with you, Valerie. Valerie McCormick, aye. Nick Tenson, aye. Dave Wanger, aye. 
Christina Shankar Grove, aye. John Prulich, aye. We are unanimous. We are adjourned. Diane.